Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Stacia. So since the last episode, it's been a little bit of time. I've been working on the base. Uh, most of the stuff that I've got set up is, or that I've got done, is still pretty much identical uh, to how it was at the end of the last episode, but I'm going to go over a couple things. Uh, first up, I did get some bamboo, and I basically went to spawn. There's a little farm set up for bamboo, so I just needed scaffolding to make frames. Uh, from block carpentry uh, so that I could make some stairs out of uh, asphalt concrete um, this stuff I mentioned it a couple episodes ago uh, you know it comes from you make it with bitumen and now we have lots of bitumen uh, so I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna get I got a bit of that made um, actually way more than what I needed because it goes so far and I started running out some roads these do give you a 20% speed increase so when we run on this uh, we actually move pretty fast down this uh, compared to this. You also notice that all of this little system is now gone. Uh, now it is worth noting that a lot of these ores they can't be processed by the crusher uh, that we set up. Uh, like for example bismuth uh, we can only process that process that really through silence mechanisms or uh, through like mechanism or something like that. Uh, so some of this stuff we will have to set up other methods for processing but that's not really a big deal. Um, if we come out, I have been doing, of course it'd be raining right now, um, I have been doing a bunch of organization, I kind of moved over our pump jack uh, to change it off in this direction. Um, also worth noting, right now, we've actually mined or uh, pumped out all of our uh, oil, but you can see that we can get up to 6 millibuckets per tick of trace uh, oil, which is actually enough to come out still very very positive on oil or diesel production. Um, so we're still setting very, very good on power um, and diesel and stuff. And then I cleaned up, as I said I would, I cleaned up the wires and cleaned up this area a bit. I actually went through a lot of steel, but luckily now we have like infinite iron. I uh, went through a lot of steel making steel mesh fences, and I set up this little area for our portable generators. By the way, this is the best place to trap a boss mob, uh, it, be it a spider or a zombie or anything, because... <laughs> <laughs> they just kill themselves on all this MV wire. I'm actually glad it's not insulated because it makes a perfect mob trap uh, for bosses and things. Um, I do have another tank set up here. We're probably going to get to that this episode. Uh, so just a heads up. And this tank is just backup diesel. Um, so there's nothing, there's nowhere that it's pumping out. And this is just in case I ever run out of diesel and I need to jump start the system. I've got 512 buckets of diesel ready to go right here. Um, and then over here, this has been backing up. Right now it's not backed up. It runs down if I run the excavator, but then I just kind of switch it back and forth. Um, right now I'm not running the excavator, both because of I was letting that build back up and because we need to, we need to talk about some aluminum. <laughs> we need to talk about it. Um, also, I set up a little redstone thing. I mentioned it in the... Uh, in the episode that we did power, how this works, but it's just adjustable repeater uh, that's reading these HV capacitors and toggling our engines on and off. And this little shed isn't finished yet, so just a heads up there. Yeah, that just toggled back on. Um, if we come over here, uh, we're going to get to this in a minute. I went ahead and just got something set up there. Over here, I moved our crusher from in here outside and set up a little shed here. And that's this crusher right here, so... Um, and it's an inventory node that's got an inserter module, and it's basically getting the items from... Where did I set? Oh, it was right out here. Okay. Uh, right here, and basically the ender chest. I wanted it to be split um, and be kind of filtered as to where it sends it, so we're just running an inserter module here. This is for ores that the crusher can process. Of course, primarily it's been processing a lot of iron and bauxite. Um, I did upgrade the furnace to an obsidian furnace, and this will actually keep up with the crusher. Running full throttle, it will keep up. Um, so, the items go in here, same setup, you know. Take a look inside of here, we are swimming in aluminum. Absolutely swimming in the stuff. I also processed all of our kind of leftover kind of materials, gold, osmium, that sort of stuff. Uh, this one over here is for processing gems, because we are running a silk touch pick. Uh, so it's going to process things like our coal, our nether quartz, our emeralds, stuff like that. Um, and it does, it is filtered um, with an inserter module for that. Now also, between 
episodes. We have updated the pack and steel now works correctly. So if we run a block of iron through here, it does make immersive engineering steel. The processing time is fixed, so it does take, you know, like nine pieces of coal or whatever, and it does produce eight, uh, nine slag per. So that's extremely nice because I'm actually using the slag for things like concrete and whatnot. So it is pretty good that that is now working and now we don't have to cheat in our steel. Um, also, in case you have not updated yet, take everything out of your crafting tables. Everything. Uh, because the crafting station mod was removed and now replaced with Tinker's Constructs, which okay, but uh, but I had prepped up a bunch of stuff in the tables and it deleted all of it. Um, I did end up getting the stuff in this table replaced. I didn't worry about the stuff in this table because all the stuff in this table is actually super cheap at this point uh, and I'm still kind of finishing this out again. Um, that's iron fences, but I do have laid out here. The reason I didn't want to lose this due to that change is because that was two stacks of gold and I don't have a whole lot of gold left at the moment. And so I'd have to go mine a bunch more gold. And I really didn't want to have to do that again just yet. Uh, but I did go ahead and lay out since they are so cheap right now, 32 machine frames because I get tired of making them. So we're going to go ahead and just grab those out. And I have been prepping up for pistons. I gotta finish out just a little more living rock. We're gonna make us up a bunch of pistons because we're gonna be using them today. And be before we get into that, and let me, just to clean out my inventory, we're gonna go ahead and make redstone repeaters. So there's a stack of those, because we're gonna be doing something a little bit expensive today. Um, let me lay out that, let me lay out that. And I'm also going to grab out, oh, and this. Yeah, we need to talk about this. Uh, over here, that's all aluminum. That's all aluminum. That's iron. Iron, I don't have as much. I've been using a lot of it for steel, uh, so I don't have nearly as much iron, but uh, we've got a lot of materials at the moment. A whole lot of them. All right, what I want to do really, really quick, let's go ahead, switch this over. By the way, the base is chunk loaded at this point uh, pretty much entirely, but we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a stack of iron gears so that we can make ourselves a stack of pistons. And over here, I've got this laid out. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves a, just a bunch of black Portuguese pavement. I went ahead and made two stacks worth, or two stack crafts worth. We only need four, so I've got a couple, you know, a couple left over. But we'll go ahead and toss these into there. And then we're just going to wait on our iron gears. Now, in the meantime, I did discover a use for some of my aluminum. Even though I have lots of aluminum, not everyone on the server has lots of aluminum. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to spawn and if we take a look Tyler has set up a shop over here called the Ex the equivalent exchange uh, and this is just at spawn basically the little starter farm that's where I got bamboo from uh, but over here and we're gonna have to do a shop at some point and sell like all this excess metals and things I guess I need to get the waystone I suppose um, and we're gonna make one as well but if we take a look uh, it says, welcome to Equivalent Exchange, a shop where you choose what to pay with. Each item has an EMC value on the item itself or named in an item frame. The price in the item frame represents the one item, but the EMC value on a stack represents the price of that stack. Simply trade whatever items that have an EMC of more than eight, no dirt, stone, gravel, etc. For anything in the chest, please put payment in the chest in front of this lectern. I will update this book as I go. This is still a work in progress and the only rules, no stealing. Okay. So over here, there is a multitude of things like blaze rods. I know he's got a couple of mob farms and things like that up and going. Um, and I would like to spend, we could get ourselves, uh, what are these, 16, 3, 4 each? Okay. Um, I would like though to get us some stacks of ender pearls. Uh, so 16, 3, 4 actually works that well because two stacks of aluminum equal a stack of ender pearls. I brought 10 stacks of aluminum, so we're gonna take five stacks of his ender pearls and give him some of this aluminum. I mean, it's it's honestly like, that's a lot of ender pearls for me. That's not a lot of aluminum for me. Like not in the least. So we can start trading some of our aluminum off uh, for that, but I mean, I'm still swimming in the stuff. Like I said, I'm not running my excavator right now because I've got a problem, but we're gonna solve it today, so. Oh, also, you'll notice I have a lot of XP right now. 
Um, the way that this works, okay, uh, let me just pop over here. And if we set this to auto output disabled, and I think this will work. What happened was I broke this furnace to move it. And I got a bunch of XP, but let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm up to 64. So this thing does store its XP. And then if you just manually move something out of it, you get all that XP. Just all of a sudden. Uh, so we basically have an XP farm in addition to uh, endless ores at this point. It's all, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this XP. I'm probably just going to enchant it all out. Um, and try to get some good books, but we'll see. But let's go ahead and get our stack of pistons. So there we go. That's expensive. And the first thing that we're going to do today, as you might expect, is we're going to get ourselves a drawer system. Because it is long overdue. Now what's nice is this pack does have framed compacting drawers. Uh, you know, I, talk, I showed off these in... Uh, Celestial Journey. This mod is a godsend, and I guess it has been updated, it seems like, to 1.16 already. Let's go ahead and get, there's a half stack of compacting drawers. So there goes all the pistons that we just made, but that's going to give us plenty of compacting drawers, so we won't have to worry about making them too much uh, moving forward, at least for a bit. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't look at that. Yeah, we're gonna start to wow. We're gonna start to like mechanism. Okay, see, I'm telling you, this pack has all. It doesn't have like just an astronomical amount of tweaks, but it has all the tweaks in the right places. Like this was really expensive, expensive just because pistons were changed. This is really expensive to start a drawer network because the controllers change. You know, it makes sense. Um, well, in that case, I mean, we could still make use of this though, so that will be okay. We're going to go ahead and get some frame compact drawers. I just, I never think about the door controller being changed. It often is. I just never think of it. And we're going to go ahead and get our 32 frame compacting drawers. And we are going to frame these out. And it's going to be upstairs. It's going to be kind of the bulk of our uh, metal storage system. That's basically what this is going to be. It's just metal storage. Metal and gems and that sort of thing. Um, but you'll really only be able to see the front of this. Um, now, if we put a block here, it will change just the front. We're just going to leave, I think, the treated wood. Because uh, you'll really only be able to see the front when these are all stacked together. Actually, because this is cheap and... Yeah, I think that'll work, actually. For kind of like a little storage room. So, we're going to go with that. Oh. They don't stack. Wonderful. Alright, so we're going to set up our storage room back. Uh, this window we'll be able to look out of, but then I think we're going to have our storage room back in here. And we are going to come up a couple blocks because this is actually where the floor is going to be for the next floor. Um, and I think I want to bring them up. I want to go ahead and bring them up one off the floor uh, for this. But we'll go ahead and just bring these out. And this is actually, let me bring this one more out. That lines up here with the wall, but it's going to be one from the wall because this is actually going to come out one block, I think. And I guess for the time being, I'm just going to have to like manually move things into these chests until uh, we can get up to a drawer controller. I was not anticipating them being expensive for some reason. I don't know why I didn't uh, double check that, but I didn't. Okay. Well, we've come out a little ways. Now let me go ahead and just bring these up a block as well. Oh, and I do want to mention that the quests have kind of been like updated or something. Um, they're kind of been changed up. So this seems to kind of have reset a lot of this. Um, this tab seems pretty much fixed except for the Coke oven does seems to ha seem to have kind of reset, but we still have the reward. I don't know. I'm just going to have to go back through and um, redo a few of these quests. The Batania stuff. Um, has changed and so it has reset a little bit. Uh, so just a heads up, um, a lot of our quests are kind of wonky right now, but we're not doing a ton as far as quests go today. Um, and the stuff that we are doing, um, the quests are still kind of sorted properly. So, and we could go through and like plug up nodes to each individual one of these and stuff, uh, but I find that that's probably going to be a bit much. And I don't necessarily have to have all this plugged up. Like if I just every once in a while grab a few stacks of aluminum and throw it into uh, storage, 
then we will always have aluminum on hand. I think the bulk of our aluminum can just get stored in compacting drawers for now. Um, that way I can just kind of cut down on the amount of space this, that this is taking up because right now I'm literally up to my ears in aluminum. So that right, for the time being, this is just going to be bulk storage, I think. And of course with like this, don't forget that we do have carry on. Um, and so we can easily just bounce up here, set that up and then just clean this out. Wow, the stack limit is 256 on these. And they can still hold upgrades. Huh. I thought normally they were only like 16 stacks. This pack may have them buffed. But there we go. Now we're storing aluminum, iron, and osmium. We have uh, right now 10,562 aluminum ingots. Actually a little bit more than that with what I have in, in, uh, in the system. But yeah, we have a lot of aluminum. And that means that now I can turn this back on. So, uh, but the next thing that I want to do is I would like to set up a few multi-blocks today uh, to get us started towards doing a little bit of, with automation. And I do have some stuff prepped up for, uh, for those multi-blocks so we can kind of move through those kind of quickly. Uh, they're all pretty straightforward, I think. So first up, right out here, uh, I do have this set up and this is, where do I click it? Where do I click it? There we go. This is a sawmill. Um, and so what we can do is we can pump in logs and things into this and it's going to strip them and then it's going to turn them into planks. Now I don't particularly have a use right now for just strip logs, uh, but if we do find that we have a use for it, we can have this thing. If it doesn't have a saw blade, it'll just produce strip logs for us, uh, which is handy in itself. Uh, but right now I really just want planks. I just want to have planks stocked up and kept stocked. Uh, but let's go ahead and we're just going to plug this up because we're going to be doing some automation first up related to this. And originally what was going to go out here in this little like open field was going to be a solar array. But I decided with all the buildings and stuff around here it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for there to be a solar array here. And I think I have a pretty cool idea for our solar arrays. Um, so once we get treated wood automated and we have better steel production, we're actually going to be doing, um, starting to work on some big solar arrays that will continue to grow throughout the series with us. So we'll have a bunch of solar power coming in too, but we'll be getting to that soon. But what we're going to do is we're gonna make a saw blade to go inside of this sawmill. One of these right here, four steel and four ingots. Aha, uh -huh, well, great. So now there's another bug, I guess, where if you make uh, steel as blocks, you can't break it down. Well, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get this made. I, I mean, I'd rather have this be a thing and not be able to break this down at all. I mean, there's no recipe at all. Like once you make it, you're gonna be using it as a steel block, uh, but that's okay. I mean, there's a lot of uses, I guess, unless you melt it. To be fair, there is tinkers now, so we can just melt it. And we're gonna get our saw blade. And then what we can do is we can just go put this in uh, this thing is going to have durability, um, where we will have to replace it after so long, but that's really not a big concern for us, uh, because it's just basically four pieces of steel uh, to do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pop over and we're going to take our botany pots. And we are going to make ourselves a couple drawers. Uh, one of these is going to be a block of steel, steel sheet metal, and asphalt concrete. So we're going to go ahead and just take that. And what we're gonna do with this one is we're going to change out this bitumen one because I don't like having that there. I'm just gonna take this back over to the base for now so we'll have some bitumen on hand um, in case we need it. So we'll just drop that in there. And now the other four drawers, uh, these are gonna be over in here. They're probably gonna be, uh, so we'll do a treated wood front and then the steel sheet metal around it uh, like so. All right, let me pop out. I guess I don't have to worry that much about night at this point. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna do a conveyor line. Uh, let me get some conveyors. So there's 16. And then I'm going to want a item router. So let's take that. And then let me get four void upgrades. And let me get one more frame drawer real quick. Or we could just go with a two by two. Do we just want to go with a two by two? I think so. Honestly, it would just be a little bit cleaner if we did that. 
so we're going to go with one single and then one two by two. Okay, so there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and make all those out. Uh, we'll have a hopper there. And then hopper, I mean, uh, I keep saying hopper, conveyor belt. <laughs> and I'm not for sure. Let me try something really, really quick. If we do a botany pot setting above this. No, nah, I really don't like the way that looks, though. I think it's going to look funny. So instead, we'll just get a couple chests and have these feed down to the chest, then the conveyors pull them out. Um, I think that would be fine. And better soils can be added to this, of course. I'm just going with this soil because it's fine uh, for our needs. And let me pull up this conveyor because we're going to change this over to an extracting conveyor so that it can pull from uh, this, this stuff uh, in just a moment. Just a moment. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up. We're going to put in an item router that sits here. And we're going to say on the blue side, you can pump out oak wood. And then on the green side, you can pump out oak wood, saplings, sticks, and let me get apples also. So you'll be able to pump out everything. And it should, it did in the past, I want to make sure, but it did, uh, used to, it would kind of round robin through an item filter like this. Um, so it kind of split off the drops, and that's what I want to make sure happens here. But, uh, or do we want to do it through the top? Let's actually do it through the top, I think. So it would be like that. Yeah, let's do this through the top. So it would be the white side, and then... Uh, we're going to go ahead down here and set up a another crate, and this one will take planks. And let me grab one of these so I can go ahead and put it in there. I need to get a few more metal presses set up soon as well, uh, so we can have different ones for different crafts. Uh, but we're going to be doing that soon because we're going to start keeping a lot of things stocked before long. Uh, so that's one of our upcoming projects uh, before too terribly long, I think. Even though I do think next episode we're going to be doing a progression push kind of episode uh, for a little bit. Because uh, I think we'll be at a pretty good spot with immersive engineering come uh, by the end of this episode, you know. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in an extracting conveyor here. That's going to start pumping out the items and if we take a look here. It's giving some of the oak logs to this and it's sending some of them on through. Um, and that's perfect. Sticks seem to all be going into here. That's great. And if we take a look over here, oh yeah, and sawdust. Good thing I made extra, I almost forgot about sawdust to be honest. Good thing I made an extra one of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to put up a frame drawer here because we're going to be producing sawdust, which we can then use for paper. Uh, sawdust flooring, which I have some plans for. And we're going to store up our uh, sawdust right in here. And then let's go ahead and just put on a void upgrade into that. Because excess sawdust, we will have a lot of uses for this in the future. But for right now, uh, we will be producing probably a bit of excess on that. But we need something to tell it when to stop making planks. Right? Uh, so what we're going to do for that is... Let's go ahead and open back up Immersive Engineering. Immersive Engineering has added additional redstone control since the last time that, like, Farming Valley, you know, we did a lot with Immersive Engineering uh, as far as automation. Now there's a whole lot more redstone control uh, that you can do through Immersive Engineering once I find it here. Uh, right down here. So we've got the redstone wire connectors like normal, but we also have the probe connectors and the interface connectors. Yeah, we're going to want the redstone probe connector. I think it'll work with this. Though I guess realistically doing it like this there's actually no benefit to not just going with the drawer. Yeah we'll use the probe connector but maybe not for this because I think just going with uh, the redstone upgrade would be just as well to be honest. So we'll just put that right into there um, and let's have the comparator. Yeah let's have it come out the back actually. We'll have it run out onto some steel sheet metal. And we'll actually kind of I'll kind of clean this up so it looks like kind of nice. And we'll have the comparator read out there. And then if we just have that come out into 
a redstone wire connector. We have that set to the brown channel. And actually since conveyors, I mean I know there's the item batcher that we could use, but since conveyors need this, the extracting conveyor to actually pull out of inventories now, uh, this won't work exactly how I was thinking. So what we're gonna do is, uh, let's just get a hopper. Yeah, a hopper would work out. Because they changed up the conveyor system a lot, which is great. They added a lot of new conveyors, uh, which will prove handy as we move forward. Uh, but I think for this, probably the best way to do this is just going to be a hopper. Because since we can't, I don't believe there's any way to really toggle the extraction conveyor, unfortunately, with redstone. Being able to toggle the redstone control conveyor belt's nice, but sadly, these conveyors don't work like create ones do. So they'll still just like dump items into the world um, so we really need to toggle the source in this case um, so that's going to be our hopper in this case uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll set this to brown out and then honestly probably just setting it up here running that up because this is all going to be kind of off limits area and running it down like that and we're going to have to set up the comparator in just a moment, but uh, if we come up, we grab some wood, and we throw it into this chest. It's going to start sending that wood through. It's going to go into the hopper, but it's not going to be able to go out the hopper until that redstone signal uh, is removed. Alright, so then what we're going to do is let's get ourselves a... Uh, can, we do a can we pull off an analog lever? I think we can. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to build this out a little bit. I might even do that as wood. I don't know, like wood that's fallen off. So I may make some adjustments here. Okay, so we'll set it here. And we'll turn this comparator up to, say, uh, let's go with like a 10. Okay, so you can see it's sending that wood through and it's coming through. It's getting stripped. Whoops. It's getting stripped through there. And it comes out of strip logs, and if we didn't have the saw in there, it would just it would come out of strip logs. Uh, but then the saw is cutting it down into our planks for us. And we should be getting quite a bit better output. Uh, so for example, let me bring this back down to zero. And that way it shuts off the hopper for just a minute. Uh, let's see, we have 644 in there at the moment. And I think it's going to give us like six per, right? So 644 turns into 650, yeah. So we are getting six uh, planks per log now. Uh, so let's go, well, this is going to be running pretty slow. Let's go to 13. And of course, these wires we can jump through. These are just redstone wires. So there we go. It's going to start sending that wood up and making us lots and lots of planks. And lots and lots of sawdust too. We've got 271 of that, which will be good. And I've already put, I think I already put the void upgrade. Yeah. And we're not going to put a void upgrade in this because we're not going to void any planks. There's no sense in running this, using power, damaging the saw blade uh, for no reason. So we're going to have it shut off when, um, when there's plenty of planks in the system, which is going to be, what, um, 50 stacks-ish, somewhere around in there. Okay, so now we've got planks being automatically created. Now the next thing we're gonna do, let's grab ourselves a stack of aluminum blocks. That's 73,000. And I just had an idea. I think instead of farming blaze rods, because it'll save me some time, I can just purchase them. Uh, a stack is 98,000. Oh, that's actually kind of expensive. Uh, what about a half stack? 49, 73. 728. Perfect. A stack of aluminum blocks will get me 48 blazer rods. That's plenty. That's plenty. So we'll just uh, we'll dump that in there. And I want to go ahead and get some ender tanks. Uh, like two to start with and then we'll we'll go from there. And for these we're going to go with red. So there's us two ender tanks. Looks like these are already preset to lava at the moment. But we are going to be diamond locking these, of course. And what kind of fluid pumps do we have? 
ideally just something cheap i know there's pumps from immersive this might be what we go with it's just immersive fluid pump so there's that and then what we're going to do let's set up the uh, so we're going to shift right click once so it says opposite side fluid input and then we're going to set that to orange for the fluid output put our ender tank down right there for right now this is just to get the creosote that's built up in here and we're going to hit that with a redstone signal and that's going to pull out all the creosote from the us now let me break this off and at this point we can now move our coke oven so we're going to go ahead and just break that down but for right now we're going to be setting this up uh just right down here um kind of next to these tanks we're going to put like a one block space and then build out a coke oven. Oh, catalyzing gland. Is that how I want to do it? Or do I want to... Let's actually bring it out. We'll bring it out just a little bit more. So we'll have a little bit more space that kind of runs down between this. Uh, and then we'll just build this out here. And then what we'll do is we'll set our pump system back up. And let me actually just get a bunch of fluid pipes so I can run it all the way over. But what we're going to do is we're going to put our fluid pump in right here. And we're going to say on this, we're going to shift right click to get fluid input. And then we're just going to right click and get fluid input because we're going to have another Coke oven right next to this. And then we're going to put this back side as the output. And then we're just going to come down. Um, basically, we're going to be running the pipes over. I'm going to have to adjust this ever so slightly. So we'll have those go there and there and clip off here and here. And then we're going to bring down that. And we're going to just right click and right click because we don't want those to connect there. And hopefully they didn't send any. You know, we got 30 millibuckets of something. Easy way to fix that is just break that off. So we're just going to dig out. Uh, right here, it's the bottom of the fluid pump, and we're going to just right-click that because we want it to output on this side. And then we're going to run our fluid pipes over. Because a lot of the stuff that's just right over here, because this is kind of like fluid area, sort of, for a lot of our fluids anyways. And so we're going to go ahead and handle creosote over here as well. And then we'll just bring this and plug that up. Okay, so now if we start processing uh, coal through here, all the creosote will automatically get pulled out and sent over, uh, which is what we want. And then we're going to get the items being pulled out as well here in just a moment. And we'll just toss that in and get that going. Um, for right now, I'm probably just going to plug a hopper up to this, to be honest, um, and manually insert coal. But down the road, we are going to be doing a little bit more automatic uh, stuff with it. But for right now, that should be fine for us. And then as for this ender tank, what we're going to do is we're going to put this. And it's actually going to be. Let me open this up just a little bit. It's going to be sitting right there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a lever on the fluid pump. And we're also going to put a lever here, which will allow this to auto output, uh, which right now it's going to all go into the ender tank. And then once this sends some more creosote over, then that will automatically get sent to the ender tank. Right now the ender tank has 11,900. Oh, there's 100 millibuckets in there. And that just made some creosote. Let's go ahead and hit that. That's going to pump it out. And now we have 12,400. Looks like it's keeping 100 millibuckets in there. Huh. It's almost like a filter. Like an automatic filter or something. But, uh, okay. So that's going to, eventually that's going to build up on creosote. And then we can, um, we'll have this ender tank to plug up here in just a minute to start using that creosote. Now, as far as automatically pumping out the cold coke, what we're going to do is just set up one of our drawers. Um, we might just go with refined pipes for doing this. Because it's pretty reasonable for us at the moment. So there's two basic extractor attachments. And there is some basic item pipes. We're going to put that right there. And we're going to put on that right there. That's an extractor attachment. And then we're going to put in our frame drawer. No, I don't want it sticking out like that. Say here. 
We'll have the cold coke in there. We'll set up the item pipe system there with the extractor attachment. And then once we have the other coke oven on the other side, then we can put the other extractor attachment on there. Um, redstone mode ignored. That's great. Um, and so we'll just have to give this a second. Right now there's three coal coke in there. So now, now that that's handled, and we'll come back and we'll double check that in just a moment. But now that that's handled, now we can move on to the next thing. Um, the next thing that I would like to do, if we open up, I'm going to have to prep a couple things because I actually didn't prep for this. Um, and I did prep up, you may have noticed, you may have got an idea from some of these things lying around. But I do actually have the prep in place for the arc furnace. But I don't know if we're going to get to that today. Uh, we might set that up next episode or we might do an, a progression episode then come back because there's actually a couple things I want to set up before we do that. Um, but I want to go ahead and get a assembler prepped up. So it's pretty, it's pretty cheap. Just sheet metal, engineering blocks, steel scaffolding. Um, should have most of that stuff lying around. So give me just a minute, and I'm going to get this placed out real quick, and then I'll be right back. Okay, these refined pipes actually don't work with the coke oven. Uh, they're one of those things that just don't interface uh, well with immersive engineering, it looks like. So let's try out pipes mod. So there's some item pipes. And how do we get the pipe wrench? Any kind of rods and then flint. So there we go, there's our pipe wrench. We got our item pipe. And then if we just plug this up, and we right click, transferring four items. There we go, that's working uh, with the Coke oven. So these work fine. Okay, so that does work at least. So we can now clean out our Coke ovens, uh, hands free at this point. And right over here, uh, we have, if we right click this, right uh, where at? Where do you want it clicked? On the side. There we go. There we go. So there is the assembler. We got that in place. Um, and if we open this up, you can see we can put in up to three recipes into this. We've covered this a bit in the past. Now, the first thing that I want to do is just take our ender tank. Right there is going to be our fluid input. So we're just going to put this in. We're going to click that, and it's going to start filling these uh, these tanks up with creosote. And what we're going to do is we're going to run out uh, conveyor there. And then right here, we're actually going to have an extracting conveyor. For right now, uh, we're going to have a chest setting here. And what we're going to do is have the, the items get fed over to this through a stocking module. Uh, which we'll get into but for right now we're going to put it just right here and i think just manually feed it for the time being and i don't know how many recipes we actually want to handle if we want to do three from this we might do three yeah might as well uh so we'll just take one of our frame drawers and we'll put this in um we'll put it setting there so we'll have ac easy access to it um and this is going to be, and I'll put some scaffolding underneath this, like support and just little detail things like that. Um, but what we're going to be producing here is going to be treated wood. Uh, so for the time being, what we can do is we can just grab a bit of this. And we can set us up a recipe that says if you take your wood and you take a bucket of that creosote, then you're going to get treated wood. And actually, we'll just have this go right there. Yeah, I think I want to do that. Um, and then what we're going to do is attach some power to this. So HV wire connector there. And then we'll just run that down. Probably to that one, I think. So that's got power. And now if we were to throw in some wood... That's going to start going through, and as it gets fed wood, it's going to craft treated wood, which then comes out to here. And we'll go ahead and lock in chests there, and we'll teach it a recipe that says that's how you make chests. i tell you what, actually, because I know we're going to be using these a bit uh, coming up for frame drawers, so we'll just go ahead and have it do slabs also. This way we kind of have just one that's just dedicated to just wood crafting, um, and then what we'll do is we'll put in treated wood twice and then chest that way we kind of have a double stock of treated wood because we're going to be uh, using that quite a bit I think 
Um, so it's probably going to craft the treated wood as long as it has creosote. If it doesn't, then it's going to start making chests and then uh, slabs as well. So if we take a look here, we've got quite a bit of slabs. We've got a few chests. Uh, it's actually prioritizing making the slabs, but that's fine. Uh, stack limit is 16, so it's not going to store up an absolute ton of the stuff. Uh, and that way I can uh, just run that and then kind of fill it up with wood and we'll have uh, treated wood always on hand pretty much. We will refine that a little bit, but that's actually going to help me out uh, a ton at the moment as it is. All right, and with that, I think we're going to end out this episode here. That gets us uh, some storage and some wood processing and treated wood um, and coal coke and things like that so that I, I was honestly tired of making treated wood already and tired of having to run coal coke. Uh, we are going to be switching over uh, in the next episode and doing just a little bit of progression for like an episode or two uh, because we do need to start pushing that because there's things that I do realistically want to have like uh, nifty little things like drawer controllers would be cool. Uh, of course, it's still a little ways off for that, uh, but kind of start working towards that stuff and pushing a little bit within progression. Um, if we take a look at our quest though, uh, we did get the sawmill quest done. Um, and we're going to be doing industrial squeezer and mixer in a couple episodes. We're going to we're going to take a break. We're going to do some progression. Then we're going to come back to immersive engineering. We're going to do the industrial squeezer, the mixer, the arc furnace, uh, some of that stuff. And then we'll pretty much just have charging station, garden cloche, water wheel, and this torch arena uh, quest left at that point. None of which are super important uh, to us at the moment. Charging station and garden cloche probably the two most important for down the road kind of things. Um, but we might also set up another couple things uh, in the coming episodes. But uh, I think we've we've put a pretty good dent into immersive enge immersive engineering at this point, and we kind of have a lot of our key nifty multi blocks up and running at this point. I think. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.